I'm just going to give you an overview of Vanaplan's capabilities insofar as uh, demand forecasting is concerned. Um, just for the benefit of those maybe who haven't uh, had any exposure to Anaplan before, it's a, it's a pure in the cloud uh, planning platform that really allows you to um, you know to basically do your job using using any device in any browser, um, and so you can really be anywhere. Uh, and dashboards are the way in which users interact with the platform. So here you're seeing is an example of like a summarized landing page dashboard that you know as um, you know as as a demand planner. Um, I'm able to kind of go to one place and see all of the information, the pertinent information that kind of pertains to me. So uh, things like alerts, uh, some key charts that I might, might want to look at, um, as well as being able to navigate to different areas. And you'll see that these dashboards are very versatile in terms of um, their use within the process. Here, we're using it basically as a landing page that you know, display some key metrics and some key information, but also being able to key alerts and being able to look, navigate to different areas. And you're going to see a lot of different dashboards as we go through um, the demonstration. So on this particular landing page, what I'm able to see is, first and foremost, my different uh, my different uh, types of for my different forecasts, if you will, where we have like a consensus demand plan. We've got a marketing forecast. We've got a plan IQ forecast. We've got a sales forecast, a customer forecast, as well as a finance forecast. More on that a little bit later when we talk about uh, collaboration within the planning process. But you can also see jumping out at me is some different alerts, things around forecast, alerts around forecast error, forecast bias, as well as data cleansing alerts. I also have some links where I can look at, you know, things like a like a like a command center, uh, being able to look at, you know, what is the when I come in, you know, when I come into the office or start my job for the day, what are the key things I need to look at as a demand planner? Because it's really all about uh, funneling that information down to you know the, the most the most pertinent information and what Anaplan Anaplan enables enables that so more on that a little bit later but also being able to start the forecasting process in terms of establishing a baseline demand correcting outliers and then also looking at some demand shaping activities around promotional planning end of life and new product introductions but let's go ahead and click on this link here and I can also see in this dashboard too here's here's my latest actuals and here's the current period that I'm in so I immediately can see the context of, of where I'm at, where I am. Let's go ahead and go into the command center. And on this particular dashboard here, it's again, more about those, those key alerts. So I'm able to kind of drill into those alerts and be able to see like what kind of sensing alerts I have from a demand sensing perspective, what kind of forecasting alerts and what kind of shaping alerts I might have, as well as some associated charts along with that. And as I scroll down, what you'll notice is that in the sensing area, I have 42 high growth product alerts and one low growth alert. So immediately as a demand planner, and I might have, you know, uh, you know, tens of thousands of SKUs, but Anaplan's alerting me to the fact that I've got 42 low growth, high growth products and one low growth product that I need to take a look at. So immediately it's been able to help me sift through all of those products that are probably doing okay, or at least within tolerance or margin margin and giving me and flagging those ones that I need to take a look at that is a much smaller subset. You can see I also have like forecasting alerts. I've got three forecast alerts and one data cleansing alert, as well as a, a gap, to, a, you know, a gap to sales uh, and looking at overall attainment versus targets. And down below, as I scroll down, you'll notice that I have a listing of those specific products that pertain to those alerts here and, and their associated growth rates. What Anaplan has been able to, to help our customers do is go from having to sift through all of their, you know, all of their SKUs to determine which ones they need to be concerned about to really presenting those to presenting those to the demand planners. So it's really allowed our customers to move to more of an exception-based management approach, which really translates into tremendous time savings. Because if I've got, you know, tens of thousands of SKUs, I've only got to be concerned about 43 of them. And those 43 are, are presented to me directly on the dashboard as, as call-outs. And then I can take corrective action on those 43 products without worrying about the other, you know, uh, tens of thousands of other ones that potentially are within tolerance. I can also drill into these forecasting alerts and get a little bit more information. So being able to kind of drill down and see that I've got, you know, two customer, customer locations and two products where I can see that you know, uh, I've got a, a, some bias alerts as well as the um, absolute percentage error in terms of the forecast. 
And what I'm able to do is actually start taking corrective action. Notice that I'm only pre being presented with those two, two items uh, that, that are part of those alerts. And I can actually attach a reason code and say, well, the reason why this one is maybe I, maybe we lost a, lost a big customer. And you know, I can type in some additional detail, like you know, lost the sale. Uh, so I can actually go in and put some additional information or context around those alerts and then basically clear them from my, from my list of, of outstanding to-dos. So we're able to do that. And we can also go into things like bias, you know, bias exceptions and be able to understand like, okay, well, you know, here, you know, here's, here's the one that sort of meets that bias criteria. You'll notice that because I put in a reason code and a comment that is now considered to be reviewed and cleared from the list. So you're able to kind of take corrective, you know, take action on those, you know, on those exceptions and, uh, you know, and be able to kind of clear them from your, from your to-do list. Now let's talk about, you know, basically performing our, you know, setting up a baseline demand forecast. Well, you know, as, you know, as the panel indicated earlier that, you know, Anaplan can generate that baseline demand forecast automatically using, you know, statistical forecasting as well as, as well as plan IQ. And the way that typically works is you basically use, you know, historical information or related data and or related data to then generate that forward-looking forecast. But what Anaplan does as a result of that is it uses backtesting to determine which algorithms most closely match the, basically the historical retro forecast of the, you know, of that SKU level detail or product level detail to then provide a recommendation and then generate a forward-looking forecast based on your parameters. So in this particular case here, what we have is, you know, and you'll notice that if I click on this particular list on the this little drop list on the dashboard, what I'm presented with here are, are some, you know, some golf based SKUs. So what we're doing is we're basically uh, doing this demand planning at a SKU level of detail. And again, you can pick your pick whatever level of detail you'd like to do your forecast at. But in this case, we're doing SKU level detail. And for this particular SKU, what Anaplan has done is it has performed a retro forecast against actuals for this particular SKU against 27 different statistical algorithms, as well as six plan IQ algorithms using external related data, and then rank those algorithms according to the selected accuracy driver, which in this case is, is MAPE, and then provided a recommendation about what algorithm to use in order to then uh, generate that, uh, that forward-looking forecast for this particular SKU. And it also provides additional information in terms of the other metrics. And again, we have a list here of you know, four different metrics, but you could use other ones as well. And again, it's very, because the Anaplan is a, a very flexible business user own platform, uh, you can add additional accuracy metrics as well and be able to then rank those algorithms based on those, uh, based on those metrics as well. But you'll also notice that the demand planner has the ability to override these algorithms as well by simply just clicking on the drop list and, and sort of browsing through all of these different algorithms and then picking which one based on their own individual judgment they want to use to override that. Um, and, and so this, the, you know, this, for, this baseline forecast is generated automatically, you know, by Anaplan based on best fit algorithms, in this case, at the skew level of detail. And now we're just going in and, and potentially uh, making some adjustments or overrides, you know, to that baseline forecast. You can also see, um, in this case, you know, what, you know, what the actual unit history was versus the unit retro forecast. And so, and, and based on how close those come to, you know, how close those are, and a plan provides that automated recommendation that again, of course, can be adjusted and overridden uh, by the demand planner. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and go back to the uh, go back to the dashboard. So we've done our baseline demand, but there are going to be outliers associated with that baseline. And what Anaplan does is it tags those. It basically tags those outliers. You'll notice here that we've got um, you know basically a, a, a sort of an upper and lower bounds of kind of what our tolerance thresholds are. And then based on that forecast, Anaplan tags anything that kind of goes outside of those bounds and parks those exceptions in a table. It's again, all about exception-based match, right? Only anything that's inside those bounds um, is, is, not, is not classified as an exception. And therefore I only have a very small list of things that I need to then take action on. And again, you can decide what those upper and lower bounds are based on you know, various criteria. So whether you wanna use like standard deviation or, you know, Infer, infer quartile ranges, how many sigmas in this particular case, 
And then Anaplan will then, based on those tolerances, identify what those outliers are. And then as a demand planner, you've got a couple of uh, different courses of action you can take. Well, first of all, you can auto-correct those outliers. Um, so it could be a fairly, you know, completely automated process, or you could, uh, you know, look at each outlier as a demand planner and then decide, well, do you want to keep this as an outlier? Are there any adjustments you might want to make to that outlier, as well as potentially tagging those outliers, you know, for, re uh, you know, with a reason code and an explanation, very similar to those uh, forecasting error exceptions you saw earlier. Uh, because you might have a situation where there might be things like promotional promotional uplift. So there was a there was a promotion uh, that affected this particular this particular skew, and that's why you know uh, you've got it as an outlier. And so you could put in you know uh, this is a you know a new product promo. So you could put in that kind of that kind of explanation, and then decide you know if you want to either keep this as an outlier or actually bake it into the forecast. And this has the the that um, effect of training the algorithm for the next forecasting cycle as well. And again, you can easily add new, you know, here you can see here that there's a number of different reason codes. You can easily, because Anaplan's business user owned, you can easily add new reason codes, um, you know, within a matter of seconds and then use those reason codes as, you know, as, when you're when you're addressing those uh, those exceptions. But again, being able to kind of tag those outliers, put reasons and explanations behind them, train the algorithm for the next cycle based on the different reasons, um, you know, you're able to do that as a demand planner. Okay, so let's uh, let's now go. Let's go back to our go back to our uh, our main dashboard here. And so we've got our outlier correction. Now let's talk about things that might affect that baseline, right? You've got those outliers, but there might be some activities that contribute to you know uplift, uh, sort of uh, you know demand that kind of exceeds that upper threshold, as well as demand that maybe is below that. Uh, below that lower threshold. So one of these uh, one of these uh, might be again something we just talked about, which is promotions. Uh, so in this example here, what you're able to do is actually have different, you know, members of your organization in different parts, like for instance, marketing and sales and so on, be able to actually engage with the solution, uh, the platform, and be able to be able to do things like promotional promotional planning. So in this particular case, I'm putting on a marketing hat now, and I'm in and I'm in an plan, and I'm able to then actually plan new pro, new promos in this particular case. And you can see I can identify like what product this promo is associated with, what percentage of lift you know I might be I might be expecting, what you know if I want to activate this new promo, how much I'm going to spend on this promo, what what is potentially the return of this promo in terms of ROI. Uh, what is the suggested retail price I should be running this promo at? When should this promo run in terms of start and end date? And what does that promo look like from a calendar perspective? So again, you, you'll notice that this is a very different look to sort of the demand planner view where we're looking at units and doing stat forecasting and dealing with outliers. But now I have my marketing hat on and as a member of the marketing organization, I can actually go in and add new promos in a in a way that makes sense for a you know a marketing user where we're adding new promos we're identifying what products we're going to promo the expected lift etc uh, associated with that and so what you're able and you're also able you know to create new promos on the fly as well and and tag those promos you know to a particular to a particular customer or uh, you know collection of customers or like a cluster if you will um, and so there, you know, different users are able to engage with the Anaplan platform, work in the way they want to work, and be, be able to contribute in the in their way to the overall demand planning process. Okay, and and so that's that's a, a promotional the promotional planning perspective. Um, and then if we take a look at you know uh, other other things that might affect the demand plan, including things like new product introductions. So Again, here, what you've got is, again, a dashboard that's now specific to new product introductions, which, again, is different than the promo planning and different than the staff forecasting, but, again, all part of a single platform, all connected together. So in this case here, if I take a look at this product here, and if I want to, you know, create a new, a new product, I can easily do that. I can identify, like, what its launch date is. And then also decide how I want to model this particular product. So if I think its profile is going to be very similar to an existing product, I, you know, I can easily do that. And you'll notice just by selecting that, that Anaplan has looked up the historical 
COGS, the historical suggested price, the historical unit volume, and it's automatically modeled out a new, um, basically a, a, a project, a PL projection for this product in a matter of seconds. And the other thing too about Anaplan is that, you know, whether it be doing a, a baseline statistical forecast, whether it be adding new marketing promos. Uh, and adjusting promo dates or lift percentages, or whether it's adding new product introductions, the time, the, the immediate, the the uh, the time between inputs and results is 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 immediate. So, and that's because of Anaplan's in-memory, you know, calculation capability. So you're seeing immediate results based on changes that you're making. So here I've got my projected PNL, I've got my my existing volume, but what if I want to say, well, this is really going to be you know, a hit we think. So we're going to actually going to increase, you know, that volume to 150,000. You can notice that my entire PL projection has now just immediately changed based on that. And again, that's that immediacy of, of the Anaplan engine. And then down below is you can actually model out things like price elasticities. So what happens if we increase our price because this product is going to be a hit? You know, what's the impact going to be on volume and what is the optimal combination of pricing? and volume that is gonna then maximize our, our, our margin. You can do all that all that kind of modeling within the Anaplan platform. So let's just go back to our dashboard, uh, another activity. And, I, and again, I maybe wanna, what I wanna do is maybe try and save a little bit of time at the end for any questions that people might have as, as, you know, as we're going through this. You can also do things like end of life forecasting as well, where you know, you've got those low growth products. Right, you saw the the high growth product alerts. You also saw the low growth product alert. And what you're able to do is actually, you know, Anaplan will pick up those trends, park them on a dashboard, and then give you the ability to say, well, you know what, I, do I do you want to, you know, do you want to end of life this particular product? And you know, you're able to first of all, you know, look at those alerts and say, you know what, okay, I'm going to use you know end of life for this particular product. And what you're able to do is also indicate the details of that. So in this case here, um, you know, we could indicate a, you know, when do we want to start the end of life process for this particular product? Cause it's that low growth. What's the duration of the run out? Like how many days do we want to run this for? What's your depletion, uh, deplet depletion method? Is it based on the forecast? Do you want to just scrap it? Do you want to do it on a straight line basis? Also too, like, what is the, you know, what's, you know, what kind of pricing is, a, you know, is that product at? And do you want to, in order to run out that that inventory, you know, introduce a, a discount percentage to kind of accelerate that process? So again, you can easily, you know, model out new, you know, end of life forecasts as well as understand what the impact is on your current inventory. So how many do we currently have on hand? What's the value of that inventory, uh, and also any kind of obsolescence that's associated with that. So again, being able to connect, you know, product performance with the realities of having, you know, of the inventory costs associated with those particular products and what, what are the impact on the organization's financials as a result of undertaking this particular um, end of life process. Okay, so that's just another, uh, another sort of example I wanna share with you. And, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about the importance of collaboration. Well, Anaplan brings multiple groups to the table to improve forecasting accuracy. So let's talk about those different groups. So we talked about marketing already in promos but also sales can have a seat at the demand planning table. And because they've got knowledge, they're looking at more things from a product account perspective. Like here are the accounts that I'm responsible for. I've talked to my customers. What are the risks and opportunities that I see? And how do I bake those into the forecast? Well, you can see here now from a sales point of view, I can immediately see, well, here's my, you know, here's the year-to-date committed, committed spend for this, for this particular customer. Here's the current year-to-date sales they have. And do I want to, you know, introduce any kind of like forecasting hedge, um, you know, because I'm, I'm measured on attainment and, you know, year-to-date sales performance, and I've got my quotas, uh, you know, do I want to introduce any kind of hedge there to kind of give me that, give me that cushion so that I know I can make my numbers. So you can put in those hedge percentages, as well as identify specific risks and opportunities as well. So I've been talking to my customer, I have, you know, I have the, I have the detailed knowledge of my customer base, and what they're, what they're working on, and, and what are their concerns. And so I can identify, you know, put in those details directly with an Anaplan, what product family that it, it, you know, it applies to, you know, is this for a, for, is this a, you know, what is this for the current year forecast? Is it next year's plan? You know, when do I think this is going to eventuate? And also too, you know, from a period perspective, 
I can select that. And also too, what is what are the risks and opportunities that I see? And so I can actually identify those risks and opportunities include and then choose to include them in the plan of forecast, which then would then affect um, you know, the sales perspective on what the demand plan should be so that so that when we get to a consensus basis, we can then take that into account and and you know and produce the right amount of products uh, to you know to meet that demand. Again, different uh, you have a different perspective here, which is adding value to the forecast uh, as well. So again, that different point of view. So now, if we and and so that, but we also could also consider giving the customer, giving our customers, you know, limited limited access to Anaplan. So in this particular example, a customer can have restricted login rights to uh, to Anaplan and then be able to say for their you know for their you know for their products their demand you know do they do they actually you know want to indicate kind of anything that maybe might be pushed out you know because interest rates are going up or whatever so they see maybe an impact to their business or potentially they might see you know what I need to do a rush order of you know of this number of units and I need to include that and I did put in a comment you know really need this rush order and so what the customer is able to do is actually interact directly with an Anaplan. They can indicate, you know, what those changes are they'd want to make to their to their specific, you know, to the specific products that they're that they're demanding. And, you know, and then bake that override into the plan, put in a comment to the demand planner who then sees it immediately. And the demand planner would immediately see that alert and say something, you know, we'll see what uh, we'll see what we can do. Well, this is an example of real-time collaboration within the platform, um, where you can give customers that limited access, and they can get immediate responses to changes uh, changes in their perspective on demand as well. And again, this forms part of that, you know, part of the stakeholder group, if you will, that ultimately arrives at a consensus. And I know I've got about uh, only about five minutes left here, so just a couple quick things. You know, once we then have kind of all those seats at the table, and you notice that I originally I pointed out on this chart here, where you have like your marketing perspective, your plan IQ baseline perspective, you've got sales impacts, as well as the customer impacts, as well as, you know, financial targets and so on. And then ultimately, we can arrive, bring all those points of view together and arrive at a consensus. And so that's what Anaplan does. And you can see here that, you know, potentially you can track things like historical forecast errors, like if sales is over optimistic, you can take that into account when you're deriving what that determining what that that demand forecast is that consensus demand is and you can assign a weight to that and basically it is the the weightings that are assigned to each group's contribution to the demand plan that then ultimately is weighted and arrives at a final consensus and you can immediately see well here's the initial baseline here's the sales lift here's the marketing lift here's the customer lift your customer changes Here's our final consensus demand plan based on, again, historical forecast errors and weightings. And then ultimately, what does that mean from a dollarized perspective? So in Anaplan, you can see units and dollars, you know, on the same, on the same dashboard. Okay, and then finally, what about scenarios? Again, extremely important in planning. Let's talk about scenario planning. Well, in Anaplan, what you're able to do is basically create new scenarios on the fly. And you'll notice here that you know we have the, the, those historical forecast weightings. We can override those weights as well to arrive at a new consensus. We can also you know create a you know new let's say call it a new new scenario. Uh, you can you can add these new scenarios on the fly. You can even you know create this this new demand scenario, and you know directly on the fly, Anaplan creates that creates that new scenario. You can change drivers and inputs associated with that scenario. And uh, then you can, you know, model out that scenario separately, you know, from any, from any previous scenarios. And you can see that Anaplan's created this new scenario on the fly, you know, based on any kind of changes in weightings or drivers that we want. And it's displayed along with any other, you know, all the other scenarios in play. And then ultimately you can decide which one you want to proceed with as a you know as your recommended scenario that kind of goes through the workflow approval process so it's very easy to create new scenarios on the fly change those drivers pull different levers in those scenarios model them out and immediately see the impact and be able to compare them to any other scenarios within within anaplan all within a matter of seconds you can create those scenarios so that really concludes the demonstration that i was planning to share with you today